Hey, this is Josh with The Verge, and we're taking a look at the new iPad. You're probably looking at these devices wondering which one is the new iPad. It's actually the uh, device on the left, but they're basically identical in design, save for some very minor uh, differences in uh, weight and thickness. So while the new iPad does look the same as the old one, uh, it, there are some significant differences. The first one is, of course, the Retina display, which you probably can't see on this video, and looking at it on a computer screen doesn't know justice, but it's an incredibly high resolution display. It's 2048 by 1536, which is uh, double the resolution of the previous iPad and uh, higher resolution than any monitor I have in my house, higher resolution than your HD television. Uh, it just is uh, incredibly high res, and it looks pretty incredible. Uh, even up close, you really can't see pixels on it. Uh, looking at a text-dense page like The Verge, um, there's just no, it's just kind of like, I said this before, but it's kind of like looking at a, a glowing piece of paper, which sounds a little ridiculous until you see it, and it just is, uh, you get an idea of how, how amazing the text and, uh, and images really look on it. Um, again, Seeing it on camera doesn't do it justice. You, you kind of have to see it in person. It should be noted that the Reddit display on the iPad, on the new iPad, is a lower pixel density than that of the iPhone 4 or iPhone 4S. Apple's explanation is that you're going to hold this a bit further away from your eyes than you would the iPhone 4. That may be true, but I have to say, even holding it really close up to your eyes, you, you can't see a difference between this and the iPhone's Retina display. And in fact, to me, this actually looks better than the iPhone display. Also inside the new iPad is the A5X SoC. Uh, it has a CPU clocked to one gigahertz and a quad core GPU, which Apple says will help with uh, graphics performance. We're probably not seeing it on titles at this point uh, since this thing has just been released, uh, but this is a, a fairly graphically intense game and there's no lag whatsoever. Um, everything moves really fluidly, uh, no stutter. But I have to say, the performance is also quite good on the iPad, too. So it's hard to say if, uh, if it's just a, a question of the code here or if the uh, new SoC is going to make a big difference. Also inside the new iPad, at least on certain models, is LTE. You can get it in AT&T and uh, Verizon varieties. I tested the Verizon version, and uh, I'll just show you a quick speed test here. I'm on LTE right now. I've got full bars, and the test numbers I'm seeing are pretty off the charts. Uh, we're in Midtown Manhattan, and uh, here you can see it's getting about 20 down, and uh, just absurd, 13 up, which is faster than I get at home uh, by a long shot uh, on Doxis 3. So really impressive performance on LTE, of course, depending on your coverage and uh, the, uh, how many people in your area are using LTE, you're going to see differences, but uh, pretty impressive. And, and in Brooklyn, where I don't get as good a signal, I still get really impressive numbers on uh, LTE performance. Uh, it's great for browsing, streaming. It's completely usable. Uh, and you can also, for the, at least the Verizon version, use the iPad as a hotspot. Um, and they've uh, got a variety of plans from one gig a month up to 10 gigs. Also of note is the uh, new camera here. They're now calling the camera on the iPad and on the iPhone 4S an iSight camera. It's a five megapixel shooter on this, does autofocus, face detection. It's actually a decent camera, uh, except for the fact that it is uh, extremely ridiculous to use an iPad to take photos with. So um, while it actually does take good photos, I can't recommend that anybody walks around taking photos with this thing because you're just going to look like a jerk. It, it takes fairly competent photos and you can see some of the detail here. Uh, they're clear, very crisp, uh, does a nice job focusing in even on close subjects. Um, and you can get an idea of the, uh, the speed here. Not that, not that the iPad 2 is a slouch, but clearly this uh, device has no trouble handling large files. Um, and in fact, even with higher megapixel pictures, 12, 14, uh, it still m handles them quite quite uh, easily and quickly. In the new iPad, the battery life is pretty much unchanged. On LTE, you lose an hour. Apple says you can get 10 on Wi-Fi uh, browsing and 9 on LTE. And uh, in our testing, that's pretty much exactly what we got, uh, surprisingly. Apple's able to achieve those numbers because they've almost doubled the size of the battery and yet haven't really altered the shape and size of it in any significant way. It's a tiny, like I said, tiny bit heavier, a little bit thicker, but the battery life is still fairly solid. There's a couple of notable additions on the app front here. First off, uh, Apple has created a version of iPhoto for the iPad. It's also for the iPhone. Um, and you can do some pretty decent editing on this. Uh, it's, it's actually surprisingly powerful. 
uh, you can get an idea again here of how fast it is at handling large uh, images. So there are a bunch of different things you can do uh, in terms of editing. Uh, you get options for fixing red eye, uh, changing the saturation, the coloring, uh, highlights and shadows, playing around with those guys. You can change uh, uh, various color elements of, of an image. It actually can detect uh, specific parts of an image. For instance, here it knows this is sky and you're able to adjust the uh, blueness of the sky um, just by swiping left or right. Uh, and this is non-destructive editing. You've got an undo up here, and you can also choose to uh, reset the changes that you've made. Um, it's also got a number of effects, kind of Instagram-ish. There's vintage stuff and black and white and, and uh, just a variety of these uh, different effects you can add on pictures. And it also has a, a vignette, which you can, which you can alter uh, using multi-touch if you really want to give it that uh, uh, vintage pinhole feel. Um, but uh, it's, it's a surprisingly powerful image editing tool. And in fact, there are even uh, Photoshop-esque features, um, like you're able to uh, repair a photo. It's something like the clone tool. It's best used when you get in close on an image. But you see here, uh, I had our editorial assistant, Michael, draw a star on his hand. And um, we're going to just see if we can repair that. A little bit of pen there. Pretty decent for uh, if you've got to do some quick edits of a photo. It, it's actually really powerful considering it's a $4.99 app and it's uh, running on a tablet. It also can import and export raw files and uh, you can work with much higher resolution images than what the iPad is capable of. So Apple hasn't included Siri in the new iPad, but they have added dictation, which does a really good job of listening to what you're saying and translating it to text on screen. Let's just do a quick test here. I'm dictating a note to the new iPad, comma, and it's pretty great. So you can see it works pretty well and pretty fast. Alongside the announcement of the new iPad and iPhoto, Apple also talked about an update to GarageBand, uh, which adds a few things like smart strings, which is a, an orchestral version of their smart guitar and keyboard and drum options. But one of the coolest new features of GarageBand is the fact that you can um, basically have a jam session with other people running GarageBand on the same network, um, whether it's on an iPhone or an iPad. And uh, basically, one person becomes a band leader, and everybody else follows their sequence. But when you play on the secondary iPads, it records to the first one and records on the second one as well. So you can contribute to a song in real time. It's actually uh, really cool. And in fact, even if you're just playing around with an iPhone and an iPad solo, you're able to play multiple instruments at the same time, which is really cool um, for uh, a musician. So um, here's something I was working on. So in closing, the new iPad is really, really good. It's got that beautiful Retina display, super fast LTE, a better processor, and more RAM. In terms of general functionality and look and feel, it's not that different than the previous version, but the new hardware really takes it to another level. If you're in the market for a tablet right now, there is no product that I can recommend more highly.